Small compound on the bottom. We're just going to rub it around a little bit on the surface down here. And that's basically just spreading out the compound so we get a nice good saturation and sitting surface. So, now it's sitting in place. We're going to take the same two screws we used before. We're going to line those holes back up. We're going to screw the diode back down to the heat sink. I would advise before you tighten your screws down, make sure you have all the screws in place. That way you know you're lined up well and not shifted off to a degree or some amount. Now we have both in. We'll go ahead and tighten them down. Don't torque these down. They don't need to be super. Just give them a good hand tight feel. If you have to replace this later or if you mess something up and you have to come back and do it, you don't want to fight it or risk stripping another screw. So, we've now got both of our, di our diode put back on and we have our heat terminal, uh, excuse me, the heat sensor terminal ready to come back. So, we're going to bring our fixture back into place here. Now, very gently again, watching for that fan. I'm going to float them over here. Now, what I've found is when this fan is just flapping over, excuse me, I have a, a guest here. When this fan is just flapping over, it's putting tension on this cable right here, and it's going to make it harder to attach these. So as best as you're able, you want to get that fan somewhere up here where you can keep it in place. So first step, you need to get this heat sensor back in place. You'll notice when you removed it out, one side has compound cell on it, one side does not. The side that does have thermal compound on it, that's the bottom. So you're going to re-slide that back in to its location where you had it. Make sure it's nice and sat all the way in. Take your screwdriver, go ahead and tighten these screws back down. Again, don't dead tight them or you might risk stripping it out last like, like somebody did before me. So, that place in, now you need to um, reattach your, uh, power term, your power cables here. Again, like I said, the red cable is your positive lead and the black cable is your negative. Now, I found after doing this a couple times that this uh, cable has a direction that it likes to get these tension clips onto the paddle. Most of the time you'll be able to see there's a little bit of curve in it. The curve should be curving down to the heat sink. That'll make it easiest for reapplying the, um, the cable. And again, see how that is making my life a little bit hard having that fan down there? So I know you're not going to be able to see this very well because there's not a whole lot of space, but you want to just gently push that back on there. If you notice something really fighting you in terms of getting it on, chances are you're putting it on the wrong direction. Stop, flip it over, try another one. So I've got my positive lead on. Now I need to get my negative lead on. Both are on. Okay, now what I'm not going to be able to show you because the fixture is tilted the wrong way, but you have to also remember to get this uh, diode sensor cable back in. And remember I told you that the side that has the exposed wire portion and the little nipple, that's towards the top. So you're again going to line it up. He's a little more finicky and a pain in the butt to get to. But go ahead, you can grab him, line him up, and just give him a good, nice seating into the, to its uh, housing. Now you've got all your cables back in and all your connections secured. We're going to mount this back in. Now I forgot to clean this heat sink before I did all this, so same deal with the fan blowing it away so my dust goes. Go ahead and just blow through, just clean out as much of that dust as you can. So we now need to replace this entire housing back onto the fixture itself. So again, we're going to line up the holes. One on top, two on bottom. Put that fan hold there. These are the longer screws that we removed from earlier because they have to go through the entire housing of the heat sink and then into the fixture. Should be three of them. So we'll line them up. Go ahead and screw them most of the way in. But again, you remember I said you don't want to tighten them down until you have all of them in. This will make sure that everything's lined up correctly. If you're choosing to use a drill of some sort, I would advise setting your torque setting to the lowest setting as you can. That should be enough torque to maintain that the, the screws are in, but not risk stripping your screw. You'll hear your torque stop you from overdoing it. And I just realized I have a cable being pinched in here. I need to make sure he's not being placed in. 
go. Okay. Now your replaced diode and your heat sink is reinstalled back on the back of the fixture. We need to put the fan back on before we can just start screwing it in. We have to reapply these terminal um, posts. So again, these will just screw into the fixture chassis itself. There's three of them. Again, if you feel something, get in there and really start to fight it. Stop, pull it back out, check it because you don't want to risk stripping it out. So we've gotten that back in. Again, we want to take our sewage and just give it a very slightest little turn to tighten it a little bit more. There we go. Now we're ready to screw our fan back onto those terminals. Again, the power lead to the fan needs to be towards the top of your working area up here because ultimately it's going to get zip tied back onto this terminal post. So line up all three of your posts and go ahead and take three screws to get these back in. Not screwing it in all the way again. Making sure that torque doesn't strip out the screw head. Good. Now we've reattached the fan. We need to re-zip tie this power lead to the fan back to this terminal post. Now you can go to Home Depot, your local electronics store, and get these very thin, very small zip ties. That's all you should need. You want The smaller the better, that means the less mess that you have inside of your fixture. Go ahead and tighten it down. Choose the best option. One at the top, one near the base. And you're going to want to remove this excess tail off of it. Just take your snips or your scissors, whatever you have, just trim the excess off. Okay, we've now replaced that. Now we need to make sure we put all the lensing and all the focusing portions back on. We're going to take this focusing lens. We didn't really give him too much of a cleaning. So again, we're going to take our microfiber cloth and apply just a small portion of solution to it. Give that piece a nice good rinse over both sides since we have the ability to do such. You want to make sure to do your best to remove any extra streaking that can be left from your solution. Okay, you're going to reapply this lens back to the top. You'll notice that the screw holes you're utilizing have the recessed portion of them. That's on the outside so that the screw fits in nicely. Line up your two points. Again, using these screws. Again, this is where it's been really helpful keeping your workstation clean and keeping your screws organized by where they belong so that when you're looking for it, you can quickly identify by quantity or by type. Okay. Again, making sure not to strip out the screws. Okay. We've got all three of those in. We're going to put on the fixture housing ring that sits on the front. There's the four small screws that go through him. That's not quite even. There we go. Again, making sure we don't screw them all the way in. Okay, 
Now we've got the last screw. We'll go ahead and go around and make sure all of them are tight. That's not actually bad. That's not actually bad. I'm just spinning. I'm not actually grabbing on the screw. If, it's, if your drill starts getting screwy with you, go ahead and find a smaller screwdriver and just do it manually. Very good. Okay. Now we've got that in. Now we're going to go ahead and put the body back on. Again, we want to go through before we close it back up, make sure we have everything working, make sure everything's still connected, seeing any dust that we can blow out one more time. We didn't clean our body housing yet. Same deal, you just want to make sure that the vent, vent ports are open and clean. Again, just taking your dust, blowing out any excess, using your air. Be careful when you're grabbing these. If you forgot to take out the screws, it's very simple to throw it out and actually all of a sudden your screws go flying everywhere. Okay. 